good day learners welcome to our science class today we will discuss about magnitude and intensity last time we discussed about the three types of faults what are these three types of faults kindly type your answer in the comment section correct they are the normal fault reverse fault and strike sleep fault we also discussed the three types of stresses these are type your answer in the comment section correct these are compression tension and shading and we also discussed how earthquakes are formed Earthquakes are formed when there is a sudden movement along the fault. Okay? Now, let's differentiate focus and epicenter. Based on the picture, can you locate where the focus is and where is the epicenter here? Alright. Here is the focus and the epicenter is located here. Focus is the point within the Earth where seismic waves originate. It is the part of the fault that has the greatest movement. While the epicenter, it is a location on the Earth's surface directly above the focus. And take note, the fault plane is the flat surface along which there is a slip or fault during an earthquake. Again, focus is where the seismic waves originated and above the focus is the epicenter. Here is another animation for the focus and epicenter. Now, faults are classified into two which are active and inactive faults. When we say inactive faults or active faults, earthquake faults are caused by the movement of Earth's stratospheric plate. Active faults can generate earthquakes, while inactive faults can no longer produce earthquakes. This is an example of a fault system here in, uh, in the Philippines. The larger or the largest among these uh, fault system here in the Philippines is the Valley Fault System. This Valley Fault System is divided into two, the West Valley Fault and the East Valley Fault. If you want to know the nearest uh, fault or active fault in your place, you can download the fault finder in a Google Play Store. Let's watch this video about the a bit clip about this valley fault system. And then after this, you are going to answer some guided questions. Dito sa atin, mapalad naman tayo at hindi tayo napuruhan kahit paniyanig ng magnitude 7.6 na ditol ang ilang probinsya sa Visayas at Mindanao nitong katapusan ng Agosto. Sa mga coastal areas kasi tumama ang malakas na ditol. Ngunit hindi raw tayo dapat magpakakampante, lalo pat dapat daw nating paghandaan ang magnitude 7.2 na posibleng tumama raw dito mismo sa Metro Manila. Ayon kasi sa pag-aaral ng Japan International Cooperation Agency kasama ang Metro Manila Development Authority at Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology noong 2004, maaaring gumalaw anumang oras ang West Valley Fault sa Metro Manila na itinuturing na mas higit na mapinsala. Kaya naman ang nagbabadyang sa kunang ito, binansaga ng mga ekspertong The Big One. Fault ang tawag sa dalawang nag-uumpugang plate ng lupa, kaya nakakaramdam tayo ng paglindol. Ang pinag-uusapang West Valley Fault nagsisimula sa Angat sa Bulahan at dumaraan sa mga lungsod ng Quezon, Marikina, Pasi, Makati, Pateros, Muntinlupa, hanggang sa bayan ng Carmona sa Cavite. Ayon pa sa pag-aaral, 
taong 1700 pa nang huling gumalaw ang West Valley Folk sa pagtataya ng Pivox. Kapag gumalaw ang West Valley Folk, aabot sa kalahating milyong bahay ang mapipinsala. Siyam na tunay ang masisira. Apat na ang gusali na may sampung palapag ang babagsak. Labing tatlong kilometro ng linya ng kuryente ang mabubuhan. Kaya magkakaroon ng malawakang brownout. Pati mga koneksyon din daw ng tubig, mapuputol. Masisira ang kalsada. Kaya ang mga paliparan at daungan, mabipilitang magsara ang higit na kinatatakutan ng lahat. Aabot sa isang daang libong katao ang masusugatan at 35,000 libo ang posibleng mamatay. Ayon sa mga eksperto, ang isang fault line daw ay binubuo ng dalawang nag-uumpugang plates. Isang mas mababang plate at isang mas mataas na plate. Itong akin na alakaran ngayon, yung sinasabing mas mababang plate. Habang ito namang malapader na estrukturang ito, ang siyang mas mataas na plate naman daw ng West Valley Fault. Kung susundan natin itong uh, direksyong binabaybay nitong uh, West Valley Fault sa bahaging ito ng uh, Pasig City, makikita natin na yung nag-uumpugang plates, dere-derecho siya patungo sa commercial at residential areas dito sa Pasig City. Kapansin-pansin ang bahagi ng West Valley Fault na ito sa Pasig. Tinayuan na ng apartment cell site tower, commercial building at maging motel. Hello po ma, magandang araw po. Nakilala ko si Ruby, residente nito. Ramdam na raw sa kanilang lugar ang banta ng West Valley po. Dati wala yan. Bigla na lang nagkaroon ng ganyan. Pero ngayon, iba na yung ano niya. Parang magkahiwalay na siya. Ayan pa, nakakaroon siya ng truck. Pero hindi naman niya dinadaan na sa front line. Pero ang mga residente nito, nagmatigas na hindi raw sila aalis kahit pa nasa bakuran lang nila ang nagbabantang fault line. Dati hindi ko po napapansin ang meron ito, ito pa. Ito po yan. Okay. Eh, may nakapansin po sila kaya sabi ko, crack talaga yan. Oo. Oh. Dahil ano, nasa tayo, nasa fault line tayo nung gindol eh. Hindi na lang kayo lumikos. Eh, wala ko kami malilipatan talaga na anong magandang lugar. Ito, maganda naman po. Ito nga, sapa lang kami rito sa, sa lindol. Base sa P-Box, dapat may limang metrong layo o buffer zone sa magkabilang bahagi ng fault line sa anumang istruktura o bahay. Alam niyo na ba na may fault line? Hindi, hindi namin alam. Wala talaga kaming idea na fault line kami. Ang MMDA may naihanda na raw para sa mahigit 12 milyong residente ng Metro Manila na posibleng maapektuhan ng lindol. Naglunsad na rin ang MMDA ng programang tinawag na Oplan Yakan kung saan hinati ang Metro Manila sa apat na bahagi at pinukoy ang mga magiging evacuation center na maaaring puntahan ang mga magiging biktima ng lindol tulad ng Intramuros Golf Course sa Maynila, Veterans Golf Course sa Quezon City, Ultra Sports Arena sa Pasig at sa Villamore Air Base sa Pasay. Alright, so after watching the video clip, do you, do you think it is safe to build houses or buildings near the active fault? Why? Alright, correct, it is not safe to build houses or buildings near the active fault because it can danger our life and it is not safe. Because any moment, this active fault can generate earthquake. Now, I want you to answer this activity. I want you to get your paper and then pen. Write your name in section. Okay, so the directions here is analyze the image below and answer the following questions. Okay, so from the news posted by ABS-CBN, Facebook warned people in Metro Manila that there will be a possibility of four a 7.2 magnitude earthquake caused from the tectonic movement of the West Valley Fault. Here are the guide questions. Number one, why do you think we must be aware of this warning? And number two, what are the things we need to do before the big one happens? So please write your answers for each question. No need to write the questions. I'm going to give you two minutes to do this.
right so submit your work in our google classroom just um, capture your work and then send it in our google classroom here are the difference between magnitude and intensity when we say magnitude it is related to the energy released by the earth and it is determined from seismic records while intensity referring how strong earthquake feels to observer and it is the effects of earthquakes to people and its surroundings like the infrastructures and it's determined through observation let's have the magnitude scale used to measure the magnitude of an earthquake we have here the Richter scale it is developed by Charles Victor the numbers used are in Arabic numbers and it has decimals to the tenths place example earthquake magnitude 9.2 on the Richter scale earthquake magnitude is a measure of the amplitude of the seismic waves recorded on the seismogram magnitude scales are logarithmic based on powers of 10 and seismic wave amplitudes increase by 10 times for each unit of the scale so here is an example of a seismogram all right so here is the device we call this as seismograph and this part is what we call the seismometer seismometer is the one that detects the vibration caused by an earthquake which are plotted by a seismograph this is the seismograph and the lines produced from this seismometer is what we call the seismogram the strength or the magnitude of an earthquake is measured using the Richter scale the Richter scale is numbered from 0 to 10 Another scale that we can use is what we call the PEIS. PEIS stands for VBOX Earthquake Intensity Scale. When we say VBOX, it is referring to or it stands for Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. Seismology is the study of earthquake. Here are the difference between Mercalli versus the Richter scale. A Mercalli scale or the PEIS is used or used to measure the effects of caused by earthquake or the intensity, while the Richter scale measures the energy released by the earthquake, which is the magnitude. Okay, the measuring tool for the Mercalli scale is the observation, while in the Richter scale, we we need to use a seismograph to calculate the or to calculate the Mercalli scale uh, it quantified from observation of effect on earth surface human objects and man-made structures and for the Richter scale the calculation is based on 10 logarithmic scale obtained by calculating logarithm of the amplitude of waves the scale under the Mercalli scale or PIS is 1 Roman numeral number 1 2 12, which is a total destruction for the Richter scale we have from 2.0 to 10.0 plus 10.0 plus has never been recorded okay so here is an example here a 3.0 earthquake is 10 times stronger than 2.0 earthquake okay for the consistency under the Mercalli scale it varies depending on the distance from the epicenter and it also depends upon the materials in that um, surrounding or location if all the materials or infrastructure in that area are made from lighted materials therefore all of these can be um, devastated under the Richter scale the consistency varies at different distances from the epicenter but one value is given for the earthquake as a whole so here uh, an example or a table for the Mercalli scale and equivalent picture magnitude and the effects okay, of the earthquake okay, for the Mercalli scale intensity 1 the equivalent picture magnitude is 1.0 to 2.0 for the witness observations they felt or they observed felt by very people barely noticeable for intensity number 2 the magnitude 2.0 to 3.0 felt by people especially on upper floors intensity number 3 
magnitude 3.0 to 4.0, noticeable indoors especially on upper floors but may not be recognized as an earthquake. Intensity 4 with a magnitude of 4.0, felt by many indoors, few outdoors, may feel like heavy truck passing by. Intensity 5, magnitude 4.0 to 5.0, felt by almost everyone, some people awaken, small objects move, trees and poles may shake. Intensity 6, with a magnitude of 5.0 to 6.0, felt by everyone, difficult to stand, some heavy furniture move, some plaster falls, chimneys may be slightly damaged. Intensity number 7, with a ma uh, magnitude of 6.0, slight to moderate damage in well-built, ordinary structures, considerable damage to poorly built structures, some walls may fall. Then intensity number 8, with a magnitude 6.0 to 7.0, little damage in specially built structures considerable damage to ordinary buildings severe damage to poorly built structures some walls collapse intensity 9 with the magnitude 7.0 considerable damage to specially built structures buildings shifted off foundations ground rock visibly walls wholesale destruction landslides intensity 10 with the magnitude 7.0 to 8.0 most massively or mo most masonry and frame structures and their foundations destroyed, ground badly cracked, landslides, wholesale destruction. Intensity 11, magnitude 8.0, total damage, few if any structures standing, bridges destroyed, wide cracks in ground, waves seen on ground. Intensity 12, magnitude 8.0 or greater, total damage, wave seen on ground, objects thrown up into air. So. We don't want to have this magnitude and intensity, okay? And we need to prepare for that. So here is an uh, animation for how it looks like. Okay, so let us summarize the difference between intensity and magnitude. Intensity shows the severity of earthquake shaking that uses as descriptive scale. When we say descriptive, we need to describe what's happening or what's, what we observe after the earthquake happened. For the magnitude, um, it is about the amount of seismic energy released by an earthquake that uses quantitative scale. Okay, because it refers to the energy, the amount of energy. For the measuring tool under the intensity, we need to use modified Mercalli intensity scale, or in the Philippines, we, need, uh, we use PEIS or PBOX earthquake intensity scale. For the magnitude, we need to use Richter magnitude scale. The symbol used for the intensity are the Roman numerals, while in magnitude, we need to use Arabic numbers. Okay? So that's all for today. If you have some questions about the lesson, please type your questions in the comment section.